In this demonstration, we'll be showing EMC Viper in a fresh install and deployment use case. So the first thing we're going to do here is log in as an administrator of the Viper system. When you first log in, you can see that you're presented with a couple different options. One is targeted for infrastructure management and the other for configuration and security. Configuration and security would be where you're going to tie in uh, the authentication to your backend LDAP or Active Directory server, uh, where you assign users to specific roles, uh, where you could also perform uh, Viper updates or you know connection for call home capabilities. In the infrastructure management space, this is where we tie in our physical resources, create virtual storage arrays and virtual storage pools that will be used for consumption. So we're going to go into infrastructure management, and the first thing we're going to have to do is actually discover some new storage arrays. So in here, you have the ability to discover and register these arrays, create virtual storage arrays, and also configure and create virtual storage pools. In the configure storage, uh, configure and discover storage arrays, we have a couple different options. We can discover EMC VMAX and VNX block arrays. We can also discover EM, uh, EMC VNX file, as well as Isilon, as well as even NetApp storage arrays. To discover VMAX and VNX block, we have to simply tie this back to an SMIS provider. SMIS provider can be presented via a solutions enabler server, for example. So I'm going to put in the provider name along with an associated IP addresses uh, and user authentication credentials, so admin and password. After I enter in uh, and confirm the password, I'll click on the register button and what will happen is a job will be created to go and discover that SMIS provider and the associated arrays tied to that SMIS provider. Now that that connection is created, we'll go in and also create a connection to our EMC Isilon array by simply pasting in the serial number, IP address, and associated user credentials uh, for our EMC Isilon cluster. And once we hit the register button, a connection will be made and that array will be discovered. We also have the ability to configure and discover Cisco MDS as well as Brocade SAN switches, which will allow us to do end-to-end -end provisioning of not only our storage uh, you know, LUNs and file systems on a storage array, but also zone and mask uh, are, you know, SAN environments as well. We also have the ability to configure our recover point uh, switches as well. Uh, we would simply just enter in the IP address uh, along with associated port, serial number, and credential information to discover an EMC recover point uh, data replication appliance. Now that we've discovered some storage arrays, we can actually view what has been discovered by clicking on the storage arrays tab on the upper part of the screen. And in here we can see that a number of storage arrays have been discovered. A number of EMC VMAX and VNX block arrays uh, by simply providing the SMIS provider of a SMIS uh, server that already has a connection to these storage arrays. We also have uh, discovered an EMC Isilon by us presenting IP address and, and credential information. We also have a NetApp array that I discovered here earlier. The next piece we're going to have to do now is actually create our virtual storage arrays. A virtual storage array is a grouping of multiple physical arrays within a specific uh, location, for example. So I'm creating two virtual storage arrays, Las Vegas and Boston. After these arrays are created, we have to create associated networks. Uh, these are going to be fiber channel and IP-based networks for each virtual storage array. So here I'm creating a fiber channel and IP network uh, for both Boston and Las Vegas. Here I'm typing in the final information for the Boston IP network. To clarify, IP networks obviously would be leveraged for our file-based storage like SIFS and NFS, and our FC or fiber channel network would be used for block-based storage. 
what we can see here is that we also uh, do not have any ports associated uh, with these virtual uh, you know, storage arrays and their associated networks. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually tying in some uh, EMC VMAX front end ports. These are FA ports. I'm tying these and registering them to uh, the fiber channel network of our Boston virtual storage array. So as you can see here, I chose two FAs and I'm tying them to that Boston FC network. After we associate our storage ports to our virtual storage array, we should also associate a, uh, our host worldwide names to these virtual storage arrays as well. So as you can see here, our virtual our storage ports on a storage array site are created on both Boston and Las Vegas. But what I'm going to do now is actually type in the worldwide name or WWN of a host within the Boston Fiber Channel network. So here I'm typing in a full uh, WWN address uh, to add into this Boston Fiber Channel network. And what that's going to do now is actually create an end-to-end -end relationship. So if I were to create uh, storage on this virtual storage array for that associated host, it would do a lot more than actually just provision the storage. I want to do more. Uh, it, would, it would do a lot more than just create the LUN. It would actually go in and, and zone the SAN for me if I created that relationship to my Cisco MDS or Brocade SAN fabric. Uh, it would also create the associated storage groups, uh, map that host to that storage group, and do full end-to-end -end provisioning, making things very quick and easy for us. After we create our virtual storage arrays and all of our necessary uh, uh, dependencies, it's now on us to create the virtual storage pool. A virtual storage pool uh, is typically either file or block, but can have a number of other different characteristics assigned to it. So what I'm creating here is I'm creating a performance, uh, you know, high tier for block. That'll be the name and description. I'm also going to put that this is tied to our VMAX arrays. So the storage type will be block, and this will be using the fiber channel protocol, and this will be tied to our Boston virtual storage array. So this will be a pool for high performance block using fiber channel and using any of the associated ports that I've tied to that Boston virtual storage array. As you can see here, it discovered all of our pools uh, from the physical array side as part of that Boston virtual storage array. And I have the ability to allow you know, all of the pools found to be tied to this virtual storage pool <clears throat> Or I can manually select specific virtual, uh, I'm sorry, physical storage pools to tie this virtual storage pool. Next, I'm going to create a file based virtual storage pool. This is going to be a high protection file, and this will be tied to our EMC Isilon array. The storage type obviously will be file. I will allow NFS as well as SIFS, and I'm going to tie this to our Boston virtual storage array. This will go and find any pools associated with the physical storage arrays tied to that virtual storage array. Again, I have the ability to allow all of these pools to be pull, uh, pulled in, or I can manually select uh, which pools I'd like. So now that we have a couple uh, virtual storage pools and associated virtual storage arrays and all the networking configuration done, I'm now going to log in as an end user into EMC Viper. The end user has a little bit of a different view. There is a service catalog that allows them to provision uh, services, uh, storage-based services, through Viper. So as you can see here, I'm going to provision a file-based storage. Uh, I'm going to create a Unix share on my Boston virtual storage array. I'm going to choose the high file uh, protection virtual storage pool. I'm going to tie this to my engineering project. I'm going to give it an export name as well as a size. I also have the ability to uh, choose if I want this to be read-write or read-only. And I'm also going to put in the IP addresses of what hosts this should be exported to. 
Again, this is just one example. I can do a number of different things from Viper, including provisioning block storage that may be associated with a number of diff, uh, you know, different uh, applications or virtual infrastructures. I also have the ability, uh, you know, because of the rich APIs within Viper, I also have the ability to automate some of these things uh, through other orchestration or automation engines, uh, including things like vCloud Automation Center or even OpenStack. So as you can see here, our, our file share was created and uh, the file system was created on our virtual storage array and the NFS export was also created mapped back to the IP address that I presented it to in the uh, in the previous window. 